Dear members of the State Commission, dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, the objective of our, our, our today's meeting is to discuss the results of the testing of the launch pad of the rocket and spacecraft and to approve the composition of the prime and backup crew that will fly to the station on Soyuz TMA-16M. The Chief Designers Commission and the Technical Commission discussed the technical condition of the ISS and the rocket and the spacecraft as well as the ground facilities, made a decision to approve the launch of Soyuz TMA-16M with the international crew to launch on March 27th. Yesterday, as part of all the preparatory work, the rocket was rolled over to the launch pad. It was tested, and all testing performed was very successful. I would like to give the floor to the head of the Scientific and Research Center, Gagarin Center, GCTC, Yuri Lanchikov, and I would like to hear his report on the composition of the prime and backup crews of Soyuz TMA-16M. Thank you very much, Alexander Nikolaevich, dear members of the State Commission. Both the program of Expeditions 43 and 44, long-duration mission, the following crew members were training. Prime crew Gennady Padelka, commander of Soyuz 16, TMA-16M, and commander of Expedition 44, Mikhail Kornienko, flight engineer of Soyuz and flight engineer of Expeditions 44, 45, and 46, and 43. Scott Kelly, flight engineer for Soyuz and uh, ISS missions. Backup crew, Alexei Avchinin, Soyuz and ISS flight engineer, Sergei Volkov, Soyuz flight engineer, ISS flight engineer, Jeffrey Williams, commander of the Soyuz vehicle and flight engineer of the ISS. All the preparation program was performed in full. All examinations were successful and per the conclusions and findings of the State Commission and the Medical Commission, all crew members are considered to be fit for the flight and ready for the flight. And at the meeting of the GCTC that was reviewing the results of the Training of the crew members, we have the following conclusions that the crew members for Expeditions 43 are ready for flight on Soyuz TMA 16M and they are also ready to perform their activities on the Russian segment. The training program was performed in full. Based on the above, we propose to the State Commission to approve the following composition of the Prime crew, Commander Gennady Padelka, Flight Engineer 1, Mikhail Kornienko, and Flight Engineer 2, Scott Kelly, and backup crew consisting of Alexei Avchinin, uh, Flight Engineer, Sergey Volga, Flight Engineer, and Commander Jeffrey Williams. Thank you very much. We would like to report on the readiness of the launch pad and the spacecraft, the general. Designer Sergei Romanov would like to report good afternoon. Yesterday on March 25th, we performed all the work for our plan regarding the preparation of the on ground facilities, and we did not, did not have any issues. And we also did the testing of the rocket and the Soyuz TMA 16M vehicle, and all these facilities are ready for launch. All right. Following the resolution of the State Commission, having listened for the reports of uh, Yuri Lanchikov on the readiness of the crew and on the composition of the prime and backup crews of Soyuz TMA-16M, and based on the report of Mr. Romanov on the readiness of the ground facilities and the rocket and the vehicle itself, the State Commission resolved first to approve the composition of the prime crew for Soyuz TMA-16M 
prime crew consisting of Gennady Padelka, flight engineer Mikhail Kornienka, both from Roscosmos, and flight engineer Scott Kelly from NASA. And to prove the composition of the backup crew, Alexey Avchinin, flight engineer from Roscosmos, Sergey Volkov, flight engineer from Roscosmos, and uh, Jeffrey Williams from NASA. And second, to continue the preparation of the rocket and space facilities per the plan. Uh, do, do, does anyone have any objections regarding the resolution of the State Commission? No. Uh, let us give the floor to Igor Komarov, head of Roscosmos. Dear colleagues, today we are present at a very important meeting and we're looking forward to seeing the very important flight. It took a lot of preparation. It will be the first expedition of this kind when cosmonauts and astronauts will be working on orbit for such a long time and the ISS the, as the international project will also perform a lot of experiments and I believe that this expedition will show us and give us an additional impetus to develop further. It is very symbolic that this expedition will launch um, in the year when we are celebrating the anniversary of the Soyuz Apollo mission. So I would like to say thank you very much to our crew members that they performed their training in full. It was very successful and I would like to wish you good luck. Thank you. Charles Bolden, NASA Administrator. Gennady, uh, Scott and Mikhail, I'm, I'm very pleased and privileged to be here representing the, the entire NASA family back in the U.S. Uh, I want to wish you the very best. There have been years of effort on the part of your support teams that have gone into the planning and preparation for this mission, and we're all excited to get you on the way uh, and then uh, watch you work as a team once you get on orbit. Gennady Scott, Gennady Scott and Mikhail, very очень рад находиться здесь сегодня, представлять НАСА. Должен сказать, что многие годы наши специалисты на Земле готовили ваш полет. И заверяю вас, что мы продолжим оказывать вам необходимую поддержку во время вашего полета. As Mr. Karamov, Kamarov has said, this represents a, a long-awaited one-year mission, which for us in the U.S. is new. Как господин Комаров уже сказал, вот этот годовой полет очень ожидаем. Для нас в Соединенных Штатах это что-то новое. И на самом деле в первый раз вот множество планировщиков, люди, которые будут участвовать в этих экспериментах, наконец-то получат те ожидаемые результаты по тем экспериментам, которые вы будете проводить на орбите. You you, uh, you, uh, Поэтому от лица тысяч людей uh, в НАСА и по всему миру, которые будут наблюдать за вашим полету и будут молиться за вас, желаю вам всего самого наилучшего и хорошего полета. Спасибо. Thank you very much. I would like to give the floor to the commander of the prime crew, Soyuz TMA-16M, Gennady Parelka. Mr. Chairman, dear members of the State Commission, first of all, I would like to say thank you that you're trusting uh, our crew, and I would like to thank you, our backup crew, for the support that they were giving us during the entire training period. And I believe that the knowledge that we got during that training will be enough for us to perform the scientific program and other report uh, and other activities on a decent level. We are ready for the flight. Thank you. Flight engineer Mikhail Kornienko. I would like to say Gennady, uh, to say thank you to Gennady for. Uh, such an introduction, and I would like to say thank you to the members of the State Commission. Scott Kelly, I would also like to say thank you to the State Commission, and I'm ready for the flight. Thank you. Commander of the backup crew, Alexei Avchinin. 
Mr. Chairman, dear members of the State Commission, as the commander of the backup crew, I would like to say that the backup crew is ready for the flight as the backup crew. Thank you. Flight engineer Sergei Volkov. I would like to wish good luck to our prime crew. I hope everything will be nominal and the timing is correct and time flies and we will see you soon. Thank you. Uh, Jeffrey Williams, thank you everyone and I'm ready. Thank you. Dear Gennady, Mikhail and Scott, on behalf of the State Commission I would like to congratulate you wholeheartedly on this mission on spacecraft Soyuz TMA-16M. We wish you good luck and hope all the program will be performed in full and we are waiting, already waiting for you here on Earth. Thank you. Expedition 4344 that will launch on Soyuz TMA-16M on March 27th to the station on March 27, 2015 at 10.22 p.m. Moscow time. Gennady Ivanovich, Roscosmos, Russia, Soyuz commander, flight engineer of the ISS Soyuz and ISS 43, 44, 45, 46, flight engineer Mikhail Kornienko, Roscosmos. Flight Engineer 2 of Soyuz and Flight Engineer of ISS 43, 44, 45, and 46, Scott Kelly, NASA. Dear ladies and gentlemen, please ask your questions. And traditional, we will start, start our press conference with the questions from Roscosmos TV studio. Mikhail, I have a question for you. During your flight, you will see Sarah Brightman on board the station. She will be a space tourist. And what do you think about that? Is that an unusual event? Uh, can you hear me? Yes. I have not had any space tourists on board the ISS during my previous flights. But I believe that it will be a great experience. And I understand that she does not have any previous experience of space flights and she doesn't know how to behave in weightlessness but we will help her and we will be supporting her as much as we can we will be doing everything together but of course it's always wonderful to see new faces to see new crews on board the ISS thank you for your question thank you Rob Rob Navius with NASA Television. I have a question for Scott and a follow-up. Scott, uh, the range of human emotions never leaves any of us for very long, whether you're on the planet or off the planet. Uh, there's obviously particular interest in uh, how you believe your emotions may fluctuate over the course of a year in space and what you plan to do to try to keep yourself on an even keel over that period of time. Well, it's, uh, Rob, it's definitely something I've uh, thought about. And, you know, fortunately, I have the previous uh, experience of being on the space station for six months. К счастью, у меня уже есть опыт полета на шесть месяцев, и поэтому мне есть что подумать и как разрешить этот вопрос. So, you know, having that previous experience, I, uh, you know, understand that I need to pace myself and my, you know, level of work needs to be, uh, you know, such that I can get to the end with hopefully as much energy as I have in the very beginning. And, and Scott, how important from an operational, scientific, and a symbolic standpoint is the fact that you and Mikhail uh, will be together for a year and what that represents for the future of deep space exploration? Well, I think most people in this room realize that this is not Russia's first uh, venture into having people stay in space for, you know, a year or longer. Я уверен, что все здесь понимают, что для России это не первый опыт пребывания человека в космосе в течение года. 
Um, but the big difference with this uh, flight is this is the first time we're doing it as an international partnership, which is one of the most, uh, you know, what I think is one of the most um, greatest success so stories of the International Space Station. Но главное отличие заключается в том, что в этот раз год в космосе на МКС проведет международный экипаж, и это очень важно. You know, furthermore, although Amisha, Misha and I are only one data point in this, uh, you know, goal to have people live and work in space for longer periods with the hopes of, of someday going perhaps to Mars. Ну и одной из самой важной целью является то, что нам придется мне и Миша работать на МКС, и в будущем, я надеюсь, это поможет космонавтам и астронавтам работать вместе. Yeah, but you got to start somewhere, and uh, you know I think this is a great start, and I'm proud to, to be a part of it, and I'm sure Misha would agree. So what are you thinking about using virtual facilities, virtual reality facilities on the ISS? For example, while you're in the woods, you can use them to find the right direction. So what exactly will you be missing there on orbit while you speak? be spending one year on the ISS. You were absolutely correct. We will be missing nature, we will be missing landscapes, woods. This is what I missed most during my previous flight. And last time I even asked our psychological support folks to send me a calendar with uh, the photographs of nature, of rivers, of the woods, of the lakes, and I put it in my crew quarters and I was enjoying those photographs very much. And one more question, do you have a mascot already, a toy that you're going to take with you? Yes, Gennady is taking a weightlessness indicator. It's a snowman and uh, we will uh, have it on space. So you don't have it right now with you? No, we will get it later. Ah, already, it's in this space vehicle already. I know, I know that you have a brother and you are the twins. Is it really difficult uh, not, doesn't see each other for one year? Uh, no, it's not. <laughs> Why? <Well, laughs> I know that he's a spaceman like you, yes? Yeah, we're, we're used to this kind of thing. I've went longer without seeing him, and it was great. <laughs> Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Rita Mitrofanova, uh, Intergalaxy Radio Station Mayak. I'm very glad to be here, and I have found a list of space experiments, and I do understand that being in space is a very serious task. But the names of the experiments, at least some of them, are pretty funny. For example, UDOT, or virtual plunge, or liquid shifting. So uh, can you please at least hint at what kind of experiments these will be? Thank you, Gennady. Honestly, of course, the names to these experiments were given by scientists and researchers. Our objectives will be installation of hardware, will be downlinking data back to Earth to the specialists who will stay here and who will be analyzing this data. And of course, we do have a lot of experiments. Some experiments are performed for the benefits of the space itself, of the ground, for example, the ionosphere, for example, some experiments are devoted to biological and biotechnological research. While we will be, during these experiments, we will be studying rodents and other animals and insects. There are also educational experiments. That's another area of the entire scientific program. And we will be uh, participating in these experiments together with high school students, with university students. We should not go into details. No, please. Uh, there is also the experiment called conjugation. So that 
during this experiment we will be studying the conjugation of bacteria. All right, all right, I understand. And we also had a competition on our radio station when we were asking questions to our audience. So one of these questions was if a child that is uh, older than two years old answers uh, the question, what do you want to do when you grow up, answers that it wants to be a cosmonaut. How serious should you treat such a response? So the question is about children. We can say that we should focus mostly on the future exploration of the Moon and Mars. And of course, we need to make our younger people more passionate, more enthusiastic about space. We do need new flight engineers, new specialists. Good afternoon, Tatiana Naraeva, Tomsk Real Sector Magazine. I have a question for Gennady. You will come back in six months and you will break the record for the most cumulative time spent in orbit. Do you have any other dream? The dream of your life, I mean, after you break this record, what will you be doing? What other achievements would you like to have in your life besides that? Right now, I would not uh, like to talk about the record-breaking presence in space because let us talk about that in September. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah, please. Kubanski Novosti newspaper and the Federation of Cosmonautics of Cuba. First of all, our greetings from the uh, Cuban region. Gennady, personally to you, all people who know you in person, uh, wish you good luck and all the best during your mission, and they also wish you a safe return back to Earth. Tomorrow we are planning to issue a special edition of the Novosti Kubani newspaper and I will be able to show it to you after the press conference today. So in this special edition of the newspaper, we are planning to describe all six crew members that are sitting here, and we would like to give more information to our readers about them. Gennady, my questions now. I know that uh, you are going to miss something in space, and maybe it's not the most rare questions that you hear. So what are you missing in space? It's a complicated question, especially for the person who goes there for the fifth time. While you work in space, you always want to be back on Earth. You're missing a lot of uh, things there. But we're going to be so busy that I don't think that we'll have a lot of time to be missing something on Earth, so we will be busy, all right? Any other questions? Francisco Guaita from Russia today in Spanish. Uh, I'm in Spanish, I will do a question in English, and Mikhail, please answer to me in Russian, okay? Uh, it's a very unique mission. You are going to be one year uh, in the cosmos. Uh, it's very difficult, but from your point of view, if you want to say, if you could say one main objective, what will be the main objective of the mission? Yes, I do understand the question. Uh, uh, так, значит, И с вашей точки зрения, довольно сложная миссия. И с вашей точки зрения, какая главная цель вашей годовой миссии? Ну, наверное, все-таки главная цель. I believe that the main objective of our mission is to lay some foundation for future deep space exploration. I mean, solar system destinations like Mars, Moon, and the last time we had such a long duration flight was almost 20 years ago. Is that correct? Yes, yes, it was a long time ago. 
And of course, all countermeasures and scientific research uh, techniques are more advanced than 20 years ago. And right now we need to test the capability of a human being to perform such long duration flights. So this is the main objective of our flight to test ourselves. However, there are a lot of other experiments that are not less interesting for the medical community, for these scientific uh, researchers and so on. Thank you. Alexander Vilkas from Komsomolska Pravda newspaper. That is right. The 18-month flight was in 1995-96 on the Mir orbital station and Scott Kelly said a couple of words about that. Mikhail, did you use any experience from Mr. Monarov, Polikov, Titov? Uh, did you talk to them? Did you do any more research about their flights? in the past. Yes, of course, I was talking to Mr. Polikov and Titov about the, their flight some time ago, and he, Titov gave me a photograph, uh, and he also uh, said good luck to me. Maybe Kat would like to add a couple of words about that. To Vladimir Titov about his long duration space flight a little bit, and uh, but he's the only person I've spoken to. Um, and he gave me some advice about it. Uh, which was to pace myself. Hi, uh, Jeffrey Kluger, Time Magazine. I would direct this to Scott. Scott, Russia has been launching men and women for since April. 1961, and the U.S. has been launching from Florida for almost as long. These two countries have a century of space flight between them, and yet what you're doing and what everyone else in this mission is doing continues to inspire people, continues to thrill people. What is it about a mission like this, and for that matter, space in general, that causes it to have that effect on people? You know, I think there are a lot of people interested interested in, in space and the space program and what we do here. Um, but occasionally you got to do something that's, uh, you know, a little bit different. And in this case, uh, expanding our uh, experience space, at least with regards to the space station, beyond what we've done previously, um, you know, which makes it, I think, a little bit more interesting for people and has caught a lot of, uh, of people's attention. Um, like I said earlier to Rob's question, you know, I think one of the big differences here is uh, we're doing this as an international partnership. And if we ever go um, beyond low Earth orbit again, um, perhaps to Mars because of the cost and the complexity, it will most likely be an international mission. So, you know, I see this as a stepping stone to that. And, um, you know, a place like Kazakhstan here in Central Asia is, uh, you know, also an interesting place to be uh, launching off the Earth. And it's. Uh, you know, it's so remote out here. I think it's, it would be, if you're ever going to go to Mars, going from a place like this would be, uh, you know, a step in the right direction. Uh, Новости космонавтики, and since we're talking about future already, I have a question for everyone. So what do you think will happen with cosmonautics in 20 years? How do you see that development, in your opinion? Thank you. You know, it's really hard to forecast today, and I know that in the 80s, Werner von Braun had a plan to land on Mars, 
right now we are living in 2015 and we're only approaching that mission but yes i believe that by 2030 a mission to mars will be possible thank you okay uh, please pass the microphone good afternoon Peter Scott from Russia today. Good evening. I have a question to Mikhail. One of the most important objectives of your missions is to lay the foundations for future flights to an asteroid, to Mars. Uh, can we say that these missions will be possible within the next 10 years or 20 years, or are they impossible? Well, we have just answered that question. It's not only my opinion, but it's uh, the opinion of absolutely outstanding people in our industry, Korolov, Werner von Braun. Of course, the major problem in this regard is the financial problem and to find out how we're going to perform these missions. But technically, if there is some political will in this regard that will support us, we will be able to perform these missions much sooner. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we are planning to move on because we have another event that is scheduled on our program. So one more question from Rob. Thank you, uh, Rob Navius again, NASA TV for Scott. Uh, later this year, November, when you pass the halfway mark of your mission, uh, the International Space Station will celebrate the 15th anniversary of a permanent human occupancy very significant achievement. How, how do you characterize that achievement, that accomplishment, and what it represents as you and Mikhail write your own chapter in space history? Yeah, it's, in my opinion, the building and operating of the International Space Station over the, you know, the course of the last 15 years is probably one of the most complicated, if not the most complicated, you know, thing that us as a species has, has uh, done. If you think about it, you know, we're building this spaceship while flying around the Earth at 17,000 plus miles per hour in a vacuum and extremes of temperatures and, and pressures, you know, putting uh, this vehicle together in some cases that these parts were never connected before on Earth. And the fact that we've done this as an international partnership, uh, not only the U.S. and Russians, but all the European partners, the Japanese, Canadians, is something that I'm extremely proud of, uh, of and proud to be a part of. Can you please stand in the center? On behalf of everyone who is present here, Godspeed.